Well, my name is Ryan Drew and I work for the Cultural Technology Development Lab, uh, which is a university-related lab um, in New Mexico. Um, so what I do there is I develop exhibits uh, using open source hardware and software for museums, libraries, um, state, historic sites, and our national parks. So national parks, they serve thousands of visitors every year, and with each year, they're also tasked uh, with a whole redesign of out-of-date exhibits in order to f reflect current research, um, to update technology, but to also address uh, accessibility as required by uh, Section 508 and ADA compliance. So um, Acadia National Park, um, which is located on an island off the coast of Maine, um, is the most visited national park um, in the U.S. They have over two million visitors a year. And so the park just redesigned their uh, nature center um, to address climate change. This is the very first park to ever address this. Um, and they have plans uh, within three years to update their um, exhibit uh, based on new research. So this past year, um, we are brought in to work on the um, electronic exhibits um, of this new install. Um, with this, um, we were also given the opportunity to introduce open source hardware for the first time in a national park. So we were able to do this with a uh, combination of um, electronics from online suppliers uh, as well as custom boards. So the Acadia Nature Center um, is actually um, unlike the rest of the park, is only open uh, four months out of the year. Um, but in order to work with this park and in, in introducing open source hardware, we had to make the case that um, open source hardware was going to, to meet the park's mission for sustainability and accessibility. And so we knew going into this project that um, the components had to be robust, um, they had to be low maintenance um, for the park um, because the most people are willing to do is just flip a switch. Um, they also had to be low cost um, in case of replacement, but they also had to be easy to replace um, when needed, needed to do so. And because the park planned to update their content, um, we made the case that it was also going to be easy to modify because the software and the hardware components um, were easily adaptable um, and affordable to do so. So this is one of the two exhibits that we worked on, and this is a bird call matching game, which was designed to uh, take an egg and match it to a local shorebird um, of Maine. So, and one thing about working with exhibits, um, there are many moving parts, and so we worked with um, the park's interpretive designer. Um, so a lot of the graphics came from him. Um, the text and video content came from the park in conjunction with um, a partnership with um, College of the Atlantic, which is um, in Acadia. Um, all the fabrication was done in Alabama, and the electronics were done in New Mexico. So um, this is the stack that we designed for the, the, the game, which is an Arduino, an RFID shield, and a wave shield um, with an amplifier and a speaker. And so uh, it was designed where you tipped the egg with the RFID embedded within, um, and then you would hear um, somebody say sorry if it was wrong, and um, you would um, then hear um, the bird call sound if you got it right. Um, and they were designed to work independently so that you could sort of mix and match and get a cacophony of bird calls. And so here is like a version of the egg pucks um, with the um, RFID tag embedded within. The next exhibit that we worked on uh, was a capacitive touch railing. Um, and so this um, project was designed to sort of compare and contrast um, sounds of a salt marsh and an open ocean, which are like present and future ecosystems. Um, the railing was designed to house a capa two capacitive touch sensors, one on the left and one on the right. And so you would touch either side to hear the sounds uh, from an overhead speaker, and it would control an LED um, lighting system on uh, above the text panels. Uh, we also knew that uh, with this design, um, power was going to be available to us behind the panels. 
So the one thing about this, because the park had a mission to design everything by Section 508 and ADA compliance, um, the railing had to be metal because um, it was designed so that if somebody were leaning on it, um, it wouldn't um, break or fall over or something. Um, and then we have um, the idea of closed fist interaction, meaning um, the components had to, the, the whole thing had to be operable with literally a closed fist and a weight no more than five pounds. Um, so capacitive touch is really nice in this case where somebody who need, has accessibility needs, um, they could touch it with and interact with it with any body part. But the fact of the matter is we have two capacitive touch sensors and one conductive rail. Um, so we said, yikes, can we change the design? Um, and unfortunately, um, we didn't have a role in the design or the choice of materials, and we, they told us no. So we decided to work with what we had, and we began by sort of working with um, the things that we knew we could solve, which was how are we gonna power these components inside the rail with power behind the, the exhibit. So this is the Museduino. Um, when th about a year prior to working on this, uh, we started designing. We wanted to. So we started looking at different microcontrollers, and we thought, okay, we're going to design our own microcontroller. Um, but it ter turns out we just decided to go ahead and use Arduino as the base and create our own shield. And so what the Museduino is is it's a shield that's designed to stack on top, and we're able to extend the. Um, inputs of the Arduino uh, via Cat5 cable with a series of satellite shields that can be extended up upwards to about 100 feet without really a dramatic loss in power or delay in signal. And so we really designed this for ourselves and last fall we debuted it at a conference called Association of Science Technology Center um, in Montreal where we worked with a bunch of exhibit designers to use this system in their museum and test it for us. So, so we use this to run Cat5 cable through the railing um, with the sensors um, on the left and right and we um, were able to power the electronics behind the exhibit. So here's a proof of concept. It uses an Arduino, an MP3 shield, and the Museduino. Um, and then next, the next thing we did was we fabricated a um, rail to the exact dimensions of the exhibit. Um, and then our exhibit designer sent us these huge steel uh, uh, clamps that were supposed to act as the switch. Um, and so what we, what we ended up having to do in order to isolate the switch from the rail itself, we tried a bunch of different um, insulating materials like rubber, uh, neoprene, uh, Teflon. Um, but if anyone is familiar with Gauss's law, this is just not something we could do. Um, so we had to convince the exhibit designer that this was a physics problem and a materials problem. And we had to, we were granted permission to sort of come up with a um, temporary solution or a prototype solution um, for this exhibit. So we had roughly about I don't know, like three weeks before installation day um, to sort of find a vendor um, based out of um, Albuquerque, New Mexico and um, sort of prototype or, or a solution for this. And so here we are with our, our railing uh, with the Cat5 going through. And what we ended up fabricating uh, was a PVC clamp, clamp with a copper inlay. Um, we were told that the design should also um, resemble the uh, uh, original design, but it turns out it wasn't a very intuitive system, um, and so the exhibit designer initially eventually uh, changed it to a more familiar interface, which uh, we had a push button and some text um, in case visitors were confused of how to interact with it. Um, so here's uh, the installation of that, and so we worked with the exhibit designer to because the Museduino was designed as a modular system, they were able to unclick uh, the sensors and components and swap out with new ones. And the bird call matching game was designed in a similar fashion where if one went down, the whole system didn't go down with it. Um, the park staff could then swap out one of the sets and easy repl e um, easily replace it with another one. And so these are our accessible RFID egg pucks. They were 
uh, handmade by someone in London. Um, they were um, to the exact size um, of their actual, uh, of the bird egg. Um, and they were also uh, textured for a tangible experience for blind and low-sighted visitors. So nat uh, national parks and cultural institutions um, are for the public. And so inherently we think that exhibits should be inclusive by design so in order to address all types of visitors. And we believe that open source hardware um, can help cultural institutions sort of merge um, both accessible and interactive um, exhibits. So we shared um, all of our designs and code um, and we made sort of tutorials for the park staff and the exhibit designers. Um, and in fact, the, the whole idea of just open source exhibits allows this to be sort of our document, documentation to be sort of a shared resource among uh, cultural institutions. Um, and the exhi exhibit designer on his own is now implementing a version of this at, with the birds of South Padre Island in Texas. Um, so, in moving forward, um, we, we really hope to continue to share um, our work um, and we hope that we can contribute to the developer community, especially those within cultural institutions. Um, and so, I have a short demo for you of the exhibits. Or not, I'm not sure what happened to the video. Thank you. <laughs>